Hello and welcome to today's lecture. In the previous lecture, we defined algebraic varieties and we looked at algebraic varieties that were not affine. In this lecture, we will look at an important class of what will turn out to be algebraic varieties that are not affine and that will give us a framework in the same way that affine varieties and affine space gave us a framework to do uh, algebraic geometry, but now we have more tools to deal with objects using this new framework. In the beginning, we will just define and look at the analog of uh, algebraic sets in this new setting, that of projective uh, space. So let's get started. So the idea is that the projective line that we defined last time by gluing together two affine lines, go back to the construction if you don't remember it, that was a useful construction and gave us new possibilities to define what could be meant by compact spaces and so on. So we want to generalize this to higher dimension by replacing affine space, AN, by something called projective space, PN, and study algebraic sets in this projective space. So uh, rather than gluing in the awkward way we did last time, we will make a new definition of this projective line and projective space in general. And then later we will show that this is in fact an algebraic variety. So projective n space, Pn, is defined as the set of all n-dimensional vector subspaces of the vector space Kn plus 1. So read, uh, drawing this schematically, if we have here K2, then we look at all lines passing through the origin in K2. And of course, any such line is defined uniquely by any point not lying on the origin. We can also see that all lines, except for the horizontal line, pass through this line at the point 1. So we have basically compactified somehow this line, adding the point at infinity corresponding to the horizontal line through the origin. And we will make all these ideas precise. So uh, using this point of view that a line is defined uniquely by any point not lying on the origin, we can view Pn as the set of non-origin points of Kn plus 1 modulo an equivalence relation. The equivalence relation saying that two points are equivalent if they lie on the same line. More precisely, if one is a scalar multiple of the other with a non-zero scalar. And so the point in Pn, the class of a point x0 to xn in Km plus 1, we write with square brackets and columns between the um, coordinates. And this gives us a projection from affine space bar the origin to projective space where we map each point to its class. So uh, notice that we write the coordinates starting with 0 going to n. This is the conventional way of doing it rather than starting from 1 going to n plus 1. And so we need uh, n plus 1 coordinates, but this idea that we're quotienting out with this one-dimensional relation should give us the intuition that Pn is something n-dimensional. At least intuitively, we can think about uh, it this way now. So we have now seen uh, the way to construct this projective space as a quotient of a one-dimension higher-up affine space, so to speak. 
But there is also another way to relate projective space to affine space, and that is to embed affine space of the right dimension into projective space. More precisely, we have an embedding from affine n space to projective n space, mapping x1, xn to the class of putting 1 as the zeroth coordinate and then x1, xn. And from this one can see that this hits all points in Pn with the first coordinate non-zero. Remember that these coordinates uh, are defined up to some global non-zero scalar factor. So if x0 is different from 0, we can always rescale our representative so that it starts with 1. So the image is u0, and it is clear from construction that once we have fixed this, there is no other identification to be made, so this is an injective map. And the inverse of this map gives the affine coordinates of a point in U0. So when we have a point in U0, meaning that x0 is not uh, 0, then by rescaling we get this point and this is the image of a unique point in affine space and these coordinates are called the affine coordinates in u0. So far embeds here just means maps injectively into when we put some topology on pn we will see that this is actually an embedding in the topological sense. And in this way, we can identify this u0 with a n. So now a n sits as the plane x0 equals 1 in pn. What about the rest? So uh, the uh, complement of this u0, uh, this is the set of all these guys with the first one equals zero. So we have zero here and x1 to xn. And now this is, of course, we can forget about the first coordinate. So this is in a one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of simply x1 to xn, and this is pn minus 1. So in our previous example, this was the point associated to the horizontal line in the picture I drew in the beginning. And so in general, this is a copy of pn minus 1. And we call this the hyperplane at infinity. Um, we haven't defined what hyperplane means in this sense, but this is so far just a name to uh, invoke the right intuition. And so projective n space is uh, built up by affine n space, disjoint union with a projective space of lower, well, as it turns out, dimension, but of lower n. So the next thing we want to do is we want to define algebraic sets in projective space. Sets defined by uh, polynomials where some polynomial is equal to zero. But what does it mean that a polynomial is equal to zero in projective space? Consider the following example. So f of t1 t2 equals t1 squared minus t2. This is a polynomial in k t1 t2. And then of course f of the point, say, 1, 1 is 0, but f of the point minus 1, minus 1 is not 0. This is fine if we are looking in affine 2 space. So, so we have 1, 1 
and minus one, minus one points in a fine two space. But they define the same point, the same point one, one in P one. So they, uh, since they only differ by a global scalar, they define the same point. And this is problematic because what should we say? Is this polynomial zero or not in this point? To make things well defined, we therefore have to exclude polynomials that don't behave well with this condition that things are only defined up to a scalar multiple. The solution is to look only at homogeneous polynomials. A homogeneous polynomial of degree d is a polynomial such that when you evaluate it at some global scalar times the uh, indeterminates, it is some scalar, namely the same scalar to the power d, uh, times the polynomial at the original indeterminates. And this should hold for any non-zero scalar lambda. Equivalently, all monomials of f have total degree d. So in our example, where f of t1, t2 was equal to t1 squared minus t2, this wasn't the case because this monomial, monomial had degree 2 and this monomial had degree 1. We could fix it maybe by writing this way. Now both monomials have total degree uh, 2. Remember, the total degree of a monomial is the sum of the degrees of each variable. Such a polynomial is called homogeneous of degree d. And then we can make the following definition that for any set of homogeneous polynomials, we define the projective zero locus of this set f to be the set of all x in Pn, where f of x is zero for all f in f. And now this makes sense because if f of uh, x0 up to xn is equal to 0 in a n plus 1, then also f of lambda x0 to lambda xn equals 0 in a n plus 1. And so this holds for all lambda in k star. And so therefore, these things are well defined when we quotient by the relation that two points in a n plus 1 define the same point in p n if they are one scalar multiple uh, times each other. One subtle thing maybe I am mixing between k to the power n plus 1 and a to the power n plus 1. Uh, since they are the same set, there is no risk for confusion here. The main point here is that homogeneous polynomials uh, are such that we can, in a well-defined way, say when they are zero or not in projective space. And so we can define a projective algebraic set in uh, the analogous way to an a fine algebraic set, namely the set, the zero locus of some family of, with now the restriction we have, homogeneous polynomials. And throughout, we will use the subscripts P as in projective whenever we are looking at projective zero loci to distinguish it from the case when we look at a fine zero loci where we will use the subscript A for a fine. And only when there is no risk of confusion, we will write v of f without any subscript.